Well, hello and welcome. My name is Grant Atkinson. I'm a reporter here at the Western Journal, and today I have the privilege to sit down and talk to Phil Robertson, the star, the patriarch from Duck Dynasty. He's got a new book coming out called Uncanceled. It's going to be coming out in February. And I get the opportunity to just sit down with him and discuss um, cancel culture, the ideas that he talks about in his book, and kind of what's making us excited about, you know, what's to come. Human beings, they want the sun shining every day and a life with no storms. So, Phil, the first thing I want to ask you is just where did this inspiration come from to write this book? I know you've had your own run-ins with cancel culture. What kind of made you say, I want to sit yeah. down and write this? Well, I've just viewed it in big picture and how it keeps expanding. Uh, people sifting through someone's past to find where they made a mistake and hold that against them and alleviate, I mean, and, and blow it up as big as they can. Everybody needs to remember, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. All. Love keeps no record of wrongs. Just forgive them and move on. You'd have a whole lot better life, and we all would, if we loved God and we loved each other and Grant, I don't see the downside to either one of those things. No downside, not in my mind. I think an interesting point that you make in the book is you talk about the Christian worldview, how that has obviously been what you've lived your entire life on, or your adult life on at least, um, since you yep. came to know Christ. At the same time, you discuss how there are some people in the Christian space who engage in cancel culture, and to me that's you know, that's one of the hardest things to see because it's so antithetical to the gospel. What would you say to, true. you know, someone who is a Christian who thinks that they are, you know, engaging in love by, by participating in this cancel culture? Grant, they don't love, they don't love each other. Hmm. Love your neighbor as yourself. And here's the, what, what I'm trying to get America to do. Love does no harm to its neighbor. That kind of brings me to my next question a little bit. A quote that's from the book you were talking about how um, Americans, more of them are kind of leaning into this more socialist, communist ideas. And you said, quote, cancel culture isn't the disease. It's a symptom of this shift in how more and more Americans are defining what a republic should look like. I think, you know, I have a love for America. I know you have a love for America. How do we kind of balance yep. this? We want America to be the best country it can be, but at the same time, we know this isn't our permanent home. You know, heaven is our permanent home. How, how do you kind of balance that? We're guaranteed immortality. Life and immortality. We are guilt-free because we know the blood of Jesus was powerful enough to remove our sin. So you have the Apostle Paul to make sure no one misunderstands where I'm coming from. First Thessalonians 4.11, make it your ambition to lead a quiet life, to mind your own business, to work with your hands so that your daily life may win the respect of outsiders. And check this out, and America needs this, so that you will not be dependent on anybody. Listen, we could love you and love each other more and more each day. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray, amen. Amen. And the film crew from Duck Dynasty, some of the big dogs, they said, we'd rather you not say in the name of Jesus, amen. Wow. I said, why? I'm praying, I'm thanking him. I'm thanking the Father through Jesus, what he's done by the power of the Spirit. They said, yeah, but some people may be offended at that. I said, well, I, 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 there's nothing I can do about that. So they had a meeting. I said, unless you change that policy, I'm out of here on this Duck Dynasty thing. Wow. So they said, whoa, whoa, whoa now easy, now easy. We didn't mean to, you know, we'll. So they said, I tell you what, I guess, I guess you could do that. So I said, the next time we had a supper scene, and they said, it's time for you, Mr. Robertson, to pray, three, two, one. And my prayer was, I said, Lord, forgive this film crew out of Los Angeles, California, 
for not wanting to use your name in a prayer. Give them time to repent before you burn their souls in hell. I said, in the name of Jesus, I'm praying, amen. <laughs> and I looked up and the camera guys about their eyes, their eyes were big, Grant. And they yeah. were like, what the world? They said, Mr. Robinson, could you pray one more time and maybe tone it down a little? So that's the things you run into in the world. You said your goal is not to kind of tear down the cancel culture crowd. It's just to, you know, point them towards the truth. You know, if we are canceling them, we're doing the same thing that we're accusing them of doing. How can we, yeah. you know, lovingly guide them and say, you know, this isn't what God has asked us to do? Jesus said, look, if they hated me, I didn't make a mistake. And I had people hate me. He said, if they hated me, they'll hate you too. If you remember when, when they tried to cancel me, <laughs> God's already uncanceled us. We're not under the written code. We're under grace. You say there's, there's, there's blood for forgiveness of our sin. But everybody needs to understand that all scripture is God breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so the man of God will be thoroughly equipped for every good work. So we take the scriptures, we lovingly sit down with people, no matter what they're up to or where they've been or what they've done, we love them enough, cancel culture included. I would just simply say, Y'all want to sit down and let's just look into the scriptures, you know, and 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 we'll discuss a subject whereby we we're counting time by Jesus. It's 2022 years since Jesus showed up. So we're counting time by Jesus, and for pretty good reason, Grant. He's God in flesh. He dies on a cross to remove the sins of the world. Three days later, he solved your grave problem, your physical death problem, your sin problem solved at the cross, your grave problem solved at the resurrection, and we're just waiting for the return. We're over here. It's almost over. We're just waiting on the return. Life and immortality is riding on it, Grant, and for the life of me, I'm just trying to get as many as I can to understand that for their sake. I've already put my faith in Jesus. I'm just trying to get them to at least listen and say, come on, folks, I mean, make a move on this. Immortality, eternal life's riding on it. So we shall see, but uh, I want them to know I don't hate any of them. No, no, I don't hate anybody. Just try to get the message to them. Love them. Tell the next one. That's the exact message that you want to get across in this new book, Uncancelled. Uh, tell us where we can get that book when it comes out, where people can look for it. Uncancelledbook.com. Uncancelledbook.com. And that'll be beginning in February the 8th. February the 8th, they'll be available. Hey, I'm already rich. So you say you didn't do it for the money. No, I'm already rich. Good night. I'm just saying to everybody out there in America, surely we can do better than we're doing now, our culture. I mean, give me a break. Yeah, we for sure. Stop loving one another, stop loving our God. Let's go here. So I'm going to make an effort at it, my man. Absolutely. And I appreciate you, you know, doing that, sitting down and talking to me. Um, it was great just to be able to have this conversation with you. And I appreciate what you're doing and the message you're trying to get out there. So thank you so much. Hey, thanks, Grant.